Astro Frog. You know, for, for the word that the meme Spin is from, I'm pretty fucking bad at it. <gasps> okay. Hi. So, I was watching Vinny play Astro Frog for in this segment on his stream. And I decided to make one in Godot. So basically the game will be made of three entities, the asteroids, the player and the world or the boundary itself. Uh, consisting of an entrance and an exit point. Pretty simple stuff. So next step of this would be just getting the assets from HIO and then start coding. Uh, so the first thing I created was the asteroid, uh, which has a sprite and then consists of initially a animation player that will help rotate the whole node within a set of time so that it look like it's spinning forever and then I'll set up the physics 2D layer so you can have a player layer and an astral layer uh, to set up the collisions and stuff and then over here I am trying to play around with the collisions as I've forgotten how to do it already uh, but as you see, yeah, it worked the next thing that I will begin to do is to, of course adjust the sprites make sure it fits the collision boundary layer but the next uh, object will be the player itself right so for the player it's very simple it's similar to the asteroid it's a kinematic to body 2D uh, sprite and I'm using this little uh, robot character that I've gotten from each uh, but I'm only using the, the uh, idle animation frames that I just keep it simple right, so initially I set it to a capsule shape uh, collision layer which I later changed to a uh, circle because a spear will be more accurate and easy to manage than just a long capsule shape. So you can see I rotated the character about say how's this two seven one uh, two hundred and fifteen degrees. So be facing the asteroid uh, right from the start. And then so for test uh I just set the jump button, which is space, to just move the character down to the bottom right. Then it will just propel it towards one of the planets or oh, asteroids so that I can start working on the uh, collision logic. Yeah, so, over here, I'm going to map the jump button to space and stuff. Yeah. So, initially, the character will move to the bottom right, so that's why the velocity input vector is 50 50. Then but as you realize, uh, once the character has collided with an asteroid, you need to be stuck, right? Stuck onto the asteroid, and then your character will spin along its perimeter, right? Then, as you press spacebar again, the character will eject out of the asteroid, and then you have whatever uh, new. You take a different vector based on wherever he left the asteroid. Uh, the calculations are pretty tricky, I would say. But uh, so initially, what I did was I used a bit of trigonometry, uh, map out how much of the x and y direction the character should move in. But it turns out I use a wrong coordinate system. And as you can see, I'm having a lot of trouble trying to... Uh, so, one thing is the orientation of the character itself on the planet is wrong. It seems to be a bit... Uh, it's like le uh, lying on the planet and off the planet, as you can see here. So what, what I did wrong is, initially I thought the... I forgot that the uh, Y coordinates on top were not positive, right? On the bot, uh, cause in Godot or any game system actually, 
the top left corner is actually starting from 0, 0 and then as you go down to the bottom and right it goes to positive x, y coordinates so the sign the trigonometry is a bit wrong and my angles were a bit off but it seemed like it worked in the previously but actually it's totally wrong and I was having trouble debugging the <laughs> the issues yeah as you can see I figured out that oh uh, if you don't use uh, the angle from the asteroid to the character and instead use the angle from the player to the asteroid it'll be easier to uh, figure out how much uh, how, how much of the vectors to calculate and so on and so forth yeah same for rotation so over here I realized that the uh, when the character is stuck onto the asteroid one of the missing one of the things I didn't consider was the orientation of the uh, asteroid itself so the character will be added to the the player will be added to the asteroid on 0, zero but actually it should be rotated along with the asteroid itself so just adding on to the degrees of rotation from the asteroid to the player when it's attached and that solved the issue so the next thing that I did was to just set up kill boundaries uh, very simple reusable kill zones with uh, collision areas sensor set a uh, kill signal to the wall node and then uh, sets up the death animations by, by calling player the death die. Uh, it's not the best way but for this simple project it will work just fine. Oh yes. So once so one of the things in the, happens when the player dies is that I want it to uh, disappear and then a splash of particles will appear. So I'm using the particles to the node here. Really nice uh, native particle effects uh, tool. You can do this yourself, but uh, this is just way easier to and simpler to have for now. So what I do is uh, initially, what I did was just to delete the whole player node when the player died. But that causes issues when you say you want to play a sound effect after the player die or uh, you want particle effects to play for a while when the player die. If you remove the node immediately, then the particles and everything will just be destroyed straight away. So what I learned to do previously was you when the player is uh, dies, you just hide the sprite and then you play the particles emitting. And then only after a certain period of time, you send the uh, signal to reload the level using a timer. Yeah, and that works just nice. Oh well, for simple cases yeah, anyway. So over here I'm just playing around with the stuff, making the asteroids more reusable so I can control what sprite it displays, what size it is. Uh, how fast it's rotating and which direction it's rotating at as well. Yeah, so the next thing I do here is to set up the wind trigger, the wind zone I call it. Uh, very simple, similar to the death zone, it just sends a wind signal to the world object and then tells it to load the next level or the next scene. So we are just making the world object more uh, duplicatable, right? So making it a reusable scene, making duplicate level one, two, three, and four, so that I can inherit it. Then I can transit from scene to scene. Yeah, so I'm testing out the wind trigger transitions. So here I'm just uh, setting up the BGM for each level, uh, getting the same assets from each io.com. It's a space music pack from some guy, can't remember who. Yeah. 
Also varying up the background elements a bit so you can have interesting backgrounds for each uh, level. And then that kind of completes the whole game actually. Oh, here I said instead of the uh, ugly here text, I use an arrow and then apply a very nice uh, bouncy bounce effect using animation player, right, which is just setting up the margins up and down so that it, it looks very uh, dynamic. A pretty cool trick I learned. Right, then I have an arrow to guide. I'll just to show you where the player should go. Pretty trivial stuff. And at the end, I uh, set up a little credit screen if you get to manage to pass the levels. And that's it. Link in bio if you want to check it out. Uh, thanks for watching.